Hello everyone and welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Albert and today I'm going to be doing the banking services sector. I forgot what number this is. I think this is video number 28 or 27 for the banking services sector. So for this video, I have about 11 stocks. This video and the stocks that are in it the stocks are not in a particular order. They're not alphabetized or they're not in a market cap, uh, you know, from large to small, small to large. They're not in any particular order. So I'm just doing them in uh, a random order because that's the way I have it for now. But again, I do have my sectors in order. So... This is why I have these videos in order as to the way they are. So let's begin. Let's just start out with the first stock. I'm going to be using Webull like I always do. And the first stock that I have is CBMB. So we have here the one year mark. As we can see here, it has not been pretty active you can see these flat lines here those flats flats it's flat flat there so the name of this company let's see what it is so it is cbm bank corp so i guess they are so actually I'm going to apologize because this stock is in a different sector and I thought it would be in a similar sector, but I guess not. So we have here, I guess they updated this. Yeah, they updated the, this is unbelievable. So they updated the Weeble app. So this is definitely, definitely going to throw me off. So anyhow, wow, this is insane. So, it looks like they mixed everything all into one. And this is way too many stocks in order to um, put this in order. This is way too much to um, analyze. As we can see here, they have it as financials and everything is put into perspective as percentage by change. So this is really going to throw my videos off. Um, I hope, I hope that Weeble can fix this because uh, I planned on actually doing this by sector, not by um, one category as an industry. So this is really going to throw me off. And I really don't know how I'm going to narrow this down. Um, it's just going to make this much harder for me to narrow this down. So I apologize. Um I can still finish the banking sector services because I do have, I have wrote down the list, but going forward, um, I don't know how I'm going to do it from there on out. So I apologize and um, I think I'm going to find another site to uh, put that in order because... Um, this is going to be very, very confusing. 
Um, I think I have another site that I can use to put this in order. So I really don't like this update, to be honest. Um, it's, it's, uh, this is very time consuming, even way more time consuming than, than, than what I plan on doing. Cause now if it's all under one category, it just makes it much harder. Um, I just can't, uh, put a list together now. So anyways, um, Sorry I was delaying this, but um, seeing this update, it's, it's a little frustrating because now it just makes it that much harder on me and I bet for other people. But again, uh, I think I have another website I can use to analyze it. So hopefully the other website that I can use, uh, maybe it will be better than Webuild. And hopefully I can uh, project the same information and still provide the same information. Um, seeing the update, now I'm sort of disappointed to be honest. Um, I, I've been using Weeble since day one. Uh, I've been doing the YouTube channel for at least two years. And I know when I first started, um, I was writing them down on a whiteboard and just recently in January, I've actually upgraded uh, my phone and I upgraded my sources and I upgraded my data and my productivity and stuff and the quality of my work. Uh, it's only been like three months and I think I've gotten better, but now this just, it just, kind of ruins my experience and my, you know, just my information to provide and to kind of understand everything all over again. I mean, I wouldn't say understand, but just a full understanding because now since everything's all streamlined, everything's all put together and everything's not in order, basically, like the way I was doing my videos and the way I'd like to organize it. Um, it just makes it that much harder. So, um, going forward, uh, I think I'm going to try to use another site and hopefully that works out for the best. So let's just, uh, continue with the video. Um, again, I didn't, I didn't think there was a Weeble update. Um, I didn't get any Weeble update. I know sometimes they're transparent and seamless. But um, this is a major update. This is like the worst update that I've had ever on the Weeble platform. Um, I did not expect this. So um, I think it's just uh, the worst update ever. So it's just harder to deal with um, the companies now. Because um, I used to like them the way they had it before. So anyhow... The one chart for CBMB, uh, it's at seventeen dollars and thirty-eight uh, cents. This is a sixty-one million dollar market cap. As we can see, the one year, um, it's not all that. We have a difference of about eleven dollars for the year. Not that much. Not really crazy about it. It's not that good. But as we can see here, it jumped up quite significantly. Uh, that's about the only momentum that has brought it within the past, let's see, two months. So that started in about the late January. It's gone up about six bucks and that's pretty much it. Stayed flat. There's no... activity for this stock there's not a lot of activity for this stock and again uh 
I failed to mention this is an over-the-counter market so this is more for private buying and selling so for that stated that's a stock that um, doesn't have a lot of buyers or sellers so now let's look at the company for the financials and looking at it fundamentally, I really don't have anything here. I have the PE there, uh, some earnings numbers. Uh, I don't have a forward PE. And the stock so far doesn't even look. Like it's all that. So we have here the ROE, ROA, PS. I'm just kind of going through this kind of quickly. Um, I just don't want to waste that much time. Oh, I finally have margins, but I don't have the 2021 results so i really can't tell i mean we're in the end of march i mean all these companies should have reported by now it takes them usually a few months but we're pretty much done with the first quarter of 2022 so i mean they should have 2021 estimates for all these companies for every single sector so it kind of sucks that we was able to do an update on you know the information for their sectors but they don't update for any financial information so Webull is kind of slacking here um i'm kind of again i'm disappointed um, that they don't have 2021 results already when they should have it. And I don't really see much. I mean, I, I have the 2020 estimates, but I don't, it's, you know, to me, that's so, um, it's not that recent. I can't really do much, but I mean, that's what I have. So again, um, it's a, it's a company that uh, okay so they do I do have this they do have I apologize this update threw me off so I, again I apologize so they do have the ranking system again which i do like but again uh this number out of three thousand companies that's just insane um when they do a whole industry and they throw all those stocks together again it just it makes it more than what it needs to be and it's less information that you can get because when you think about a financial sector, that's just a basic, that's just a basic, you know, industry. But when you start detailing it, what, you know, what kind of financial uh, system or companies that we're talking about now, if you go more into detail, and it could be broken down into something more where people can understand the type of business, then that narrows down uh, different facts and different understandings and stuff. So when that happens, it's less companies. Like I said, fi financials can be like, you know, the banking system. Uh, it can be asset managers. There's just so many financial companies. Because when you say that, it's just like in general, you know. I I don't like stuff 
when it comes to in general it's better to be detailed when it comes to the stock market because there's just a wide variety to say something when it could really be going into detail and it's just like it's just better information and a better process so when you do that you learn more you get to do more and it just becomes uh a better system to organize and understand so um that's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration so again i do like that they did the the ranking system and the peer comparison but i've gotten over that uh for it's been like a few years already at least a year already so i i don't mind if they don't have this anymore i can do it without this i really don't care for this anymore uh because that this changes like weekly so i, I can do without that so again it, that doesn't really I mean, I'm sure this might be new to some people and it's not new to me and it can help people, but um, I just prefer not to. Again, my most important uh, piece of information when I do this, it's really the sectors and the fi financial information. That's pretty much it. Everything else I can pretty much do without. So this is like vital to my videos and my feedback and my information that uh, helps me generate an understanding. So um, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just upset about um, this update and how I'm un understanding it. So uh, CBMB, I don't like the stock, uh, let's move on. Um, next one is OPRT. So we can see here the one year, uh, they've been going down since November of 2021. Volume uh, is awful. Can do a little bit better. Hopefully it does. You never know in the coming months. Well, supposedly as of right now, it seems like they're undervalued. Uh, 52 week high and low so let's compare that to the chart and let's see what that looks like so we have here we have up to here and this is the bottom so we're looking at about that that looks like a big decline but numbers wise that is a difference of so round this off to 28 so minus 12 so that is about um 16 bucks more or less i mean i'm just guesstimating so we have that about 16 bucks of a difference um that doesn't seem like much i've seen more so they do not pay a dividend. Usually banks do pay dividends. If they're not, sometimes they are using that cash. Hopefully they have enough cash to grow the company or try to do an acquisition or save it for some kind of purpose and have it on the sidelines parked. So... Let's look at the cash flow since they are not paying a dividend. Let's look at uh, where is it at? So financials. I do have 2021 info, which is good. So let's do that. We have ROE at 8.86%. They have really low debt. I'm surprised. They have very, very low debt compared to their peers. So we have 79.5 debt. Not too far from the years prior. Not off by much. You can see the net income varies greatly. Uh, one year they went positive. 
Another year negative. So we have negative, negative, then they went positive in 2021. Um, that's very unstable. Can't really tell if the company is profitable or not. We have operating income. Some years positive, some years negative. Uh, when they do go positive, they tend to be positive very, very strong. Uh, those percentages. But uh, I don't really look at percentages. But if you look at the numbers, I mean, see here. You go from two million in twenty seventeen, all the way to one seventy, down to eighty four, down to negative fifty eight, then sixty two mil. I mean, I don't know what this company is doing. So we have here. Uh, so that's like seven fifty. So they are cash flow, cash flow positive. I'm sorry, I got my tongue twisted. Um, this company is so weird. I don't like companies like that. They, you know, they're doing good one year, bad the next, good year. Bad year, good year, bad year. And then when they do have a good year, it's very, very strong. It's, I, I just can't deal with inconsistency. I'm sorry. So I'm going to have to say no. And as you can see, the market cap. And for one thing, too. um, And then I know this is obvious for people. But usually when a market cap, when they're a small cap company, which is considered to be two billion or more. Usually, they're taken as a serious company. Even though they're like mid cap, they're like not small, but not hardly large. Uh, but when they get in that range to the two billion, that's when, you know. It can be it can be stable is what I'm saying. Usually when it's in the two billion dollar mark for pretty much any company. But when they're under that two billion dollar mark, uh things tend to be kind of like inconsistent, up and down. I don't I don't really like inconsistency. Um it's very tricky, it's hard to maneuver. Uh, it's just like a roller coaster ride. You don't know what's gonna happen. Um, I just I'm not in favor for it. Um, sometimes it can be an opportunity to kind of jump in and steal profit, but um, it's just not for me when it's up and down like that. Especially fundamentally when uh, you want to invest in a company in the long run. Uh, you know, with prices and um, market caps like that and one year you're generating good revenue, the next year they're not. And I don't like guessing games. So this stock, I'm going to have to say no. So the name of this stock is... So this is the weird part. Now I have it as... Banking Services. Uh, and it's under the consumer lending. So maybe this update is not fully transparent maybe if it affected some stocks not all of them so what that tells me is that uh hopefully 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 um this update can stay like that i do not like when uh this is like my lifeblood right here again as you can see and i've been doing this for like the past two years um this is also considered uh, sorry for my handwriting. It's hard to write on pen here. But this industry is also called the financials. But the information that I'm providing instead of financials. Like instead of calling this. Let me start over. Instead of calling this and this. 
of financial stock. And this one too. Sorry, financials. As you can see here, I like being more detailed with these stocks because they're, it's very specific and it's very detailed. So again, the main industry, I call it sector, so I, I got to apologize for that, but it's the same difference if you really look at it. So the main industry for this stock is actually the consumer lending. The secondary industry for this stock is called the banking services sector or industry. So that's what I prefer. That's why my channel is more, uh, I would say, educational and more, um, I wouldn't say user friendly, but it's more knowledgeable uh, compared to other channels. So when you have uh, consumer lending, so now I'm actually showing you guys, instead of clicking financials, look at the amount of stocks that I have to look at or go through instead of reviewing the financial sector, which was like over a thousand stocks. When I look at the consumer lending sector, it's more detailed and I have less stocks to review. So right here, that's already 45 stocks. Then with that, that will be plus eight. So 8, 9, 10, so 13, we're looking at 53 stocks, which is not a lot. I prefer 53 stocks instead of 530. I'll take 53 any, any time of the week instead of trying to review. Um, oh, sorry. Let me throw on my... I apologize, guys, uh, for the interruption. So, I do apologize for that. So, let's continue. So, again, um, I don't know if this update fully went through or not. So, anyways, this stock, I'd say no. Uh... You know, comparing the 52-week high and the 52-week low, um, even though it's undervalued, um, it's just not growing strong enough uh, compared to the technicals. And then the fundamentals are okay, but they're just not supporting the stock as it would like to be. Um, I do that they have. I do like that they have lower debt than their peers but uh compared to their peers usually they're more consistent and this stock is very inconsistent so i'm moving on to the next one next one is ecpg encore cap group so let's click on that one so we have here been growing it dropped a little bit here but for the most part guys you can see it's grown I don't even I can't even think of the percentage but you can clearly see it has grown for the year which is a good sign let's look at the five year it has grown for the five year now, they do have earning potential. 52-week high is nice. Volume looks nice. Sorry, uh, I kind of... I should maybe underline it instead of drawing a circle. So, I apologize. I, I covered the numbers a few seconds ago. So, as we can see here... PE, very undervalued so, so far. And I'm saying so far, <laughs> this looks like a good stock. 
uh, for the long run, uh, definitely, instead of drawing circles, I'm going to try to draw the, I uh, like that, very undervalued. Oh, I'll do the check mark. Here we go. Uh, so the numbers look good, but what people, some people might not like is that they are not paying the dividend. So this right here might be a problem for some people. They're not paying the dividend. I can live with it. Uh, again, especially the banking sector. Uh, a lot of banks, they do pay the dividends. If they're not, hopefully they're doing the right thing and they're earning more. And instead of paying the dividend, they're saving that cash, parking it, maybe doing um more expansion or more locations. Uh, who knows if they might expand into other countries. But maybe those are future plans because as of, as of right now with the Russia and Ukraine situation, things aren't um, good in the Europe area. Um, the Asian markets, I would, um, basically out east, which is, uh, you know, if you take the whole world, split the world in half, we're out west, so we have the Americas on the west in Canada, and then we have every other country pretty much out east. So, things aren't looking good as of right now when it comes to the other side of the world. Uh, a lot of conflicts, so I can't really recommend anything, but uh, usually people stick by their country, so us Americans, we're going to stay with American stocks. Um, Chinese people, Chinese, they're going to stay with Chinese stocks. Russians, they're going to stay with Russian stocks. No matter what, everybody wants to root for their own country. I get it. We're in times of need. Um, it's hard to support other countries right now and root for them. When it comes to the stock market, I mean. And um, again, this whole political aspect, it kind of sucks that that comes into play. But that comes in the territory when it comes to the stock market and investing because... Other countries are involved. Other people are involved. Um, things happen. So um, what I'm trying to say is you never know what a company might do with their cash flow. So from experience, there are just different scenarios that may play out. So anyways, for the cash flow system, Let's just hope they're expanding online and do better online services and customer service, which is what a lot of people prefer. Um, it doesn't bother me none. So again, I don't have anything for the debt. And hold up, maybe do I have any 2021 stuff? So I do. So sorry, I was going too fast for you guys with that. So it looks like they've been beating estimates for this year so right there right there right there they beat in estimates for 2021 which is good uh i'm not recommending the stock um i know i recommended a few um i'm not supposed to but sometimes i do it i guess you know out of generosity because that's the way i am but again i can say i like this stock from my perspective um, if you like it too, then put it on your watch list. Again, I'm not recommending for people to buy it or sell it. Watch list it. I think it's a good stock. Uh, let's look at the debt. Like I said, they have lower debt compared to other people. Other companies, I mean. Sorry about that. So we're looking... Whoa, so they grew their margins. They have grown their margins in 2021. That is very exciting. So they have grown their equity. Management is playing a key role as well. So that tells me 
did they get no management for this company? This is, wow. Uh, with the numbers, uh, things are just kind of playing in my head. So what that tells me is that they have good management because of the asset returns and the equity. They are managing money like an like a investment banking system. So whoever's in charge, if they got new management or whoever's involved with the financials or with the buybacks and actually the, the, the stock implementation for the uh, shareholders, the, um, the insiders and stuff, so whoever's on that board of directors, they know what they're doing. They are growing tremendously. So net income, they've grown. Revenue is about the same, which is not too bad. Operating income has grown. I see a lot of good signs for this company. Cash flow looks like it's, let's see, six. 30. So cash flow looks flat, but for some reason they do know how to generate money. I think it's because they've been beating earnings. So this company, oh, this company is a corporate financial service. So they are not. So this is all mixed up. I'm thinking all these stocks are in the banking services sector. So again, I know it's easy. And that's why I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. But um, I'm surprised so far. I'm getting these different sect. I mean, these industries. So uh, we have here, uh, they're a capital group. The name of this company is Encore Capital Group. Uh, let's see. So they have financial obligations to credit originators, including banks. It also provides debt servicing and other portfolio management services to credit originated for non-performing loans. So they do... Uh, can I move this? Oh, boy. Um, so as we can see at the bottom here, it says they are... In Europe, United Kingdom, and Ireland. So they have foreign. I, I don't know if this is a U.S. company or. I mean, it doesn't say ADR. So this is a U.S. company that. Has assets overseas. Which is not bad. Uh, there's only a few European countries that they are having again this is not a two billion dollar company but close to it you see the market cap again this company is in the corporate financial services industry as you can see there are not too many of those there's only about 25 companies here as you can see that for that industry And we will go on with the next one. So I would say yes. This one's a watch list. Next up is NNI. So let's just cut right to it for the... Let's look at the company. Consumer Lending. Nelnet. So Nelnet is a technology company. 
engaged in loan servicing and education technology services and payment processing. So, what else did they do? Services such as tuition payment plans and billing. They, this is what I want to see. Okay, so they're focused on providing fiber optic service directly to homes and business for internet. Hmm. They say they're, uh, so, they say they're a technology company, so they have a wide variety of services, so that's exactly what they said. But the first thing they do mention is loan servicing, then they say education technology services and payment processing. So this, to me, is saying... They just kind of do student loans and they pay, they have a payment processing system that allows them to collect money from student loans. So, again, they're not operated as a bank, but they do consumer lending. So, basically, uh, They're lending out money to students. So let's look at the chart. We have the chart at one year. So we look at that, then it drops down and it kind of went up looking flat. We have strong earnings, the volume is at 155k they are above a two billion dollar market cap stock so they look okay we look at the 52 week high and low the pe they do pay dividends but the dividends are pretty low they are paying a 1.1 percent uh, let's look at this again. I know you couldn't see the number, so let's look at the 52-week high and low, which is a difference of about, let's say, 28 bucks, 29, more or less. So round it off to 30. That's still not bad for the year, $30 payout. So earnings are... A 10, which is really, really high. Now we're going to look at the financials. Let's look at the dividends real quick. So 22 to 24. So they do have rising dividends, so which is always a good sign. So now let's look at the financials. Annual. Revenue is at $1.42 billion. We have a debt at 86, which is pretty high. Um... I would say watch list this company. I know it's expensive, but their earnings are pretty strong. Earnings are pretty strong. They've missed only one out of the four quarters. So this one checks out. This one checks out. This one they beat. So three out of four. It's pretty good. Um, even if they did two out of four, I'll take it. Not, not bad and not considerably good, but still take it if it was two out of four. So let's look at the ROE. 
management and the board of directors, insiders, everybody involved with this stock. It has not uh, grown or performed more than expected. It's just based on the overall market and whoever buys, buys. But like I said, by looking at the numbers, the growth is not there. Obviously, in 2020, the margins have grown considerably. So we have 8% all the way to 25. Those are big margins ever since 2020. But who didn't grow in 2020? Which is not a surprise. So let's look at the cash flow. So they grew their cash flow in 2021. Sorry, let me look at that again. So, yes, they grew it to 158%, as we can see here. So, cash reserve has shrunk. Let's look at the net income, about the same from 2020 to 2021. We have here revenue. About the same from 2020. Operating income has grown in 2020, like I said, but it's not a surprise. Uh, operating, investing. So we have here cash flow positive. So the company definitely has cash to cover the dividends. Uh, Let's look at the one year again. So let's look at the five year. They are growing. People seem to like it. So definitely a watch list for this stock. Next up I have is NICK. Uh, this is at $10.19. Nineteen Volume I do not like. 52 week low and high of a difference of exactly $3. Earnings are positive. Um, that's the only thing good I can say. Uh, slightly overvalued. They do not pay a dividend. Is this a new company? No, this is not a new company, but uh, they have not grown. Nobody seems to like it. It's not uh actively being traded or this is not a popular stock people don't seem to like it overall so i'm gonna say no and let's look at the profile this is another consumer lending stock let's read a little bit about this before I go to the next one. So it says it's a consumer finance company engaged primarily in acquiring and servicing automobile finance. So they deal with automobile loans. Also light trucks, which is a good business to get into because those are big payments for people to make. So that's not bad. Uh, I see the potential for stability, but it is hard to grow. Now, it says that there are in 14 states, but it doesn't say which ones. Sorry. Let me detail that. It says it provides direct, where's the pen writing? Here we go. It says direct loans in about 14 states, but automobile finance loans are in 16 states. I'm assuming both types of loans are in the same states. So they're definitely in the U.S. 
hopefully they can get into more states. Now let's look at the market cap of this company. Very, very low. As you can see, 129 million. Uh, again, they are not paying dividends and they shouldn't be. Uh, this is not a good stock. So I'm going to say no. So again, um, not even going to look at the financials. They do have low debt. Got to hand it to them there. 45% debt. And again, they just don't have the activity and, and continuation of strong performance to make the stock price go up. So again... I guess that's a competitive uh, industry, the consumer lending sector, even though uh, I had this originally under the banking services uh, industry slash sector. So again, I'm going to say no to this stock. Moving on to the next one that I have is GABC, German Amern Bank Corp. Uh, we have a few more stocks to go. I'm going to try to hurry this up. But again, uh, again, I apologize for the delay. Um, it looks like Weeble made the, an update. And it kind of threw me off. So I'm just kind of going with the flow. I don't really want to remake this video. So um, it's hard to do that when I've already started. So uh, again, uh, thank you guys for your patience. And allowing me to still... Uh, continue the video um, with just minor delays, but it's just like an all of a sudden, um, you know, situation that was unexpected. Um, I didn't see any notifications for updates. So the stock I have here, GABC, we have here uh, volume 55K. Uh, needs to do better. 52 week high and low of 48 high, 34 low. That is a difference of about uh, 14. So $14 throughout the whole year. That's not a lot. Not really popular. It shows that it's undervalued. They do pay a dividend. Earnings are pretty decent. Gotta give them that. Um, insider trading and activity again. Um, as for volume, it just needs to be more. Um, it's not a lot and not too little. It just has to be more. Very few people are paying attention to it. So this is the five year. Let's look at the one year. Went down. It's looking flat. So far, I'd say no. Stay away from this stock, uh, short term and long term. So we have here higher debt than normal at 88%. Uh, they are under the banks, which is good. Finally, I have a bank stock. So let's read a little bit about it, see what they do. Um, I know I don't really go to websites. I kind of just, after so many companies, you kind of get the idea of reading the profile. Uh, but again, guys, you can always um, just Google the name and you guys are more than welcome to go to the website. Um, that just takes too long for me. I trust the Weeble um, to narrow down my information and, you know, again, to get you quick and accurate and useful information. So we have here... Uh, oh, they're in Germany. That is not a good sign as well. Well, obviously, they're called German American Bank Corp. But um, you just never know where the headquarters are, or where the corporate world is. So, you know, heavily in Germany. Germany right now is kind of off limits because with the Russia... Uh, sanctions and all that. Germany heavily relies on Russia for oil and gas. Uh, I think about um, more or less around 30% of their energy comes from Russia. So 
that is not a good sign to kind of do business with Germany as of right now since they are under the influence from Russia. So now's not a good time is what I'm saying. Hopefully down the line in a few years, who knows? I could be wrong, maybe this year, um, but I doubt it. So um, yeah, let's just keep reading what they do. So in the U.S. side of things, it says that they have 68 banking, off 68 banking offices and... They are in Kentucky, and they are in some counties in Kentucky. So they say 19 South Indiana counties. Uh, let's look at what else they have. What do they do? They are core banking. They have trust, investment, advisory services, and insurance operations. <coughs> It seems like they do a wide variety of things, which is pretty good. Uh, they track deposits from general public, uh, and they use funds to originate consumer, commercial, and agriculture, commercial, and agriculture, real estate. So that's pretty good. They do believe in the farming industry, which is to provide food and products, which is still necessary really good uh i do like their system it just doesn't seem popular as of right now uh so again i stay away from this stock for this year let's look at the dividends i know people love to look at the dividends rising dividends as you can see they have here from 19 cents raised it up in 2021 two cents raise is always good Raised it up in 2022 for this year. Another two cents, which is good. So that looks like the trend and the consistency from this company. So every year, two cents. So rising dividends, always a good thing. Any splits they had? Yes, they have in 2017. Split ratio, 342. So again, I'd say no for this stock short term and long term. Next up that I have is LEVL, Level 1 Bank Corp. So we have here earnings per share, 3.9. Undervalued stock at around 10. 52 week high and low of 42. Low is at 23. We're looking at a difference of about 20 bucks, more or less. Uh, 20 bucks for the year. I'm not crazy about it at all. So far, I'd say no. Market cap is at 320 million. Well, let's look at the chart for the year. It's not bad. Um, so far, Fundamentally, um, I'm wrong. So as you can see here in November, they had a big, big move. But it's been flat ever since. So now looking at it from a technical side, let's look at it here. So we have here a break of about, trying to look for a break of about 39.50 which it is above about 39.50, but it needs to break more than that. We have resistance and support levels. We have the support level at about uh, 38 and change. We have a resistance level at about 42. 42 high and about what? Uh, 38 low, so that's a four dollar difference of range that we're talking about for the last few months. So let's look at the profile here. Uh, they offer a wide variety uh, Michigan and West Michigan, that is around central US, all the way up north. Um, that's close to Canada. Um, 
So let's see what they do. Bank owns about 17 offices. I don't really care about offices. Uh, banking centers, okay. Now you're talking. This is commercial real estate loans, including construction and land development. Very important, including lines of credit. Important, small-term loans, SBAs, including paycheck protection program loans. So... Their business model seems pretty good. Pretty good business model. So we have here uh, dividends about the same, only a penny for raising dividends every year. No splits, which is good. Uh, we have here volume is low. So again... I'd say no to this stock, short term and long term. Uh, we have here 2021 results. Doesn't look like the company is growing fast. They have a lot of debt compared to their peers. 2021 net income has grown. So that has grown about. 30% at least. So we have it at a little above 30%. So we have uh, operating cash flow, investing. Cash flow positive. Um, decent stock. Again, it's just not popular right now. It's not looked at very much. Um... It's a possible watch list, but not right now. Um, again, it's a decent stock. It's flat the last few months. It had momentum in November. Nothing past that. And it just looks flat. Uh, is it right now? No. I'm going to say no short term and long term. So next up that I have LCNB. So we have a lot of inconsistency, very, very choppy. Stock is at $18.92, pretty cheap. I'm gonna say no so far. 52 week high and low of uh, 20 high, 15 and change low of a low. That's only like a $5 difference. It's telling me it's undervalued. Earnings are positive. Dividends are being paid out, eighty cents for the year. Dividend yield of four percent. I do not like it by looking at it. Uh, they are in the bank stock. What do they do exactly? Construction loan loans, uh, refinancing. Uh, they seem like they do a lot. This seems like a kind of municipal seems like a, a government um type of bank or something uh a municipality like i see like all these services like as if they're like uh uh like um like when you pay your electric bill and stuff like that i see here like utility bill notary Cash management, mobile banking. They don't this doesn't seem like a bank. It seems like a like a like a Western Union almost kind of uh company. Something like an Amscot or like uh it's like a like a one stop shop to pay your bills. Like yeah, like I said, it's like a Western Union. The, the, the um looking at this, but what they do. Um but it says they're a bank. Um, have it on the bank right here. Clear as day. It says they're a bank. And secondary sector, banking services. So they operate like a Western Union. If you don't know what a Western Union is, it's like a one-stop shop to pay all your bills. They consolidate all your bills. You could do money orders and stuff like that. Uh, I live in Florida, so... Uh, the alternate for Western Union 
is called Amscot. Again, you can pay your utility bills and so many other bills, like all in one, you know, all in one shot. And, you know, basically they do money services pretty much for you. So uh, let's look at the dividends. If they have provided raising dividends, dividends, and yes, they have by one penny. Two splits. Last one was in 2007. Two for one split. Financials we have here. Uh, we have here, yep. So, by the looks of it, I'm going to say no. It's not popular. It's undervalued, supposedly, but it's just not worth it at the moment. And I'm sure a lot of banks are not as well. Moving on to the next one. World Acceptance Corporation. It don't look like they pay dividends. Let's look at the five-year. Pretty choppy. Really choppy. These pat. Look at that chop. My gosh. I don't like that. I'd stay away from that. Uh I know they had a difference of 52 week low. So they're over a $1 billion company. I want to say close to 2 billion, but they have a 52 week high of 265, 52 week low of 120. That is a difference of $140, $145, give or take. Really strong earnings per share. They do not pay dividends. And. As of right now, this is not a stock that is popular, but from the difference of the year, that is a good amount of money compared to other stocks in the banking services sector or the financial sector, whatever you want to call it. But I like to be more detailed, like I said, so... I like to call this the banking services sector or the banking sector. So we have here. Sorry, I was trying to scroll down. Not right. So we have here. Uh, analyst ratings hold and underperform. We have here. I'm going to analyze this myself. So let's do this down the middle. I'd say about 200 bucks. It would have to break. So 22K for volume. They don't seem popular as of right now. They have very low debt, which is good but what so they're in the consumer lending a small loan consumer finance company you know since this sector keeps coming up i think i'm gonna do that one for the next one if not i'm sure i'm gonna knock out so many so um i'm definitely gonna do the consumer lending soon that keeps coming up and coming up and again I'm, I'm when i do the sectors it's in alphabetical order so the letter C is coming up pretty soon. Um, I got to check my A's for the sector. I think I have an airline sector uh, to look at, but that's only like 10 stocks, if I'm not mistaken. And then I'll jump back to the letter C sectors. World Acceptance Corporation is a small loan consumer finance company. So let's look at that real quick. Uh, access to uh, sources of consumer credit, such as banks, credit unions, finance businesses. Okay. Good business. So as we can see here, they like to give loans out at a minimum price. It says between 250 and three thousand five hundred dollars with the average loan being one thousand one hundred and twelve dollars that is very very descriptive and i love that 
it gives you a number as to the amount of people, I mean, sorry, the amount that people are taking out for loans. So it's not much, but it's something. Again, something is something. Uh, a little over $1,000 that can pay, you know, the majority of your rent. For some people, maybe all of their rent, partially. Um, you know, it just, that covers an expense. Um, it doesn't say, let me read it again. So it does say individuals. The company primarily serves individuals. So these are just regular people, everyday people, uh, taking out loans. So that shows that the consumer lending business, um, still, and I think always will be active. Uh, that's definitely a sector I just love, and uh, I recommend one of my stocks from that sector. If you haven't seen it, then you got to see the uh, the portfolio, the long-term portfolio that I did in January. I'll try to put that link in that description. So this company is in different states. As we can see here, the states that they cover... Um, I'm never going to count them all. Probably at least 10 states. So, again, this looks like a decent company. You can watch listed if you want. Um, That's a difference of a high and low, again, of uh, $140. I don't know if they can reach that high again of $265, even though it's at $188 right now. So, that right there... That is a difference of, let me see, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26. So that is a difference of about uh, $80. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, of about $80 range. But again, there's no volume to support it. Uh, but let's look at the chart one last time. Let's see what's going on. As we can see here. It's slightly going up, but again, the volume is not there, and there are other factors in the technical world that is not supporting it as of right now. So again, you can watch this if you want, but I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. So I have two more stocks. Thank you for bearing with me. I know this is over an hour, but uh, these stocks are very important because they are vital to our economy. And definitely, definitely, these are essential uh, stocks. Next stock, PCB. PCB Bancorp, volume, I don't see much. The numbers uh, look okay. I like what I see. So we have a difference of the 52-week high and low of about 12 bucks for the year. Market cap is about 350, really, really low. That's a very micro cap company. One year, they look solid. I like the one year chart. But again, if you look at the numbers of the 52 week high and low, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like the chart is what I'm saying. You know, like I say, if you haven't seen any of these numbers and oh whoops and just by looking at this chart you can see it's gone straight up it's gone straight up but when you look at the numbers chart wise looks good numbers wise doesn't look so good uh fundamentally it looks like it's, it's being supported uh, so they are in LA. So they, they look like they're in major cities, which is good. So they do a lot of vital services. So we have here dividends. Two cent raise in that 2019. So in 2021, 
It's about the same. Late in 2021, it's gone up two cents. Gone up a few cents more in 2022. Let's look at any splits. No splits as of this year and none at all. Earnings seem okay. So again, stock could be better. So as of right now, I'm going to say no to that stock. We are off to the very last one, Credit Suisse Group. For the year, they have gone down. Uh, volume is at 8.83. Very strong volume. Earnings are negative. This is a $21 billion company. I don't have any current price to earnings ratio. Forward earnings at 8.8. .8, so either way, even in the future, forward looking earnings, they're going to be undervalued. So what it seems. So we have here dividend yield as of 3% at least. Uh, let's look at the five year down as well. So it looks awful, awful, awful. So Credit Suisse, no, Universal Bank, uh, Wealth Management, they are Asia Pacific Divisions, Wide Range of Investment Services, uh, looks awful within the five years, so definitely no, definite no, definite no. Let's look at the dividends, even though... They have raised it, and they pay only once a year. So let's start off from the 2013. So they raised and went down the same, stayed the same, got lower. It went lower, lower, got a raise in 2020, and went slightly lower in 2021. Um, a once a year payout. Uh, I don't think a lot of people will be happy with that. I'm sure I will not be happy as well. Negative net income. Awful. Let's look at the financial details. I have nothing for 2021. I have no estimates or results. Let's look at the debt at least at 94% for 2021. Definitely high versus their peers. Let's look at some cash flow. They have negative cash flow. Awful company for a big company, might I say. So people don't like it. Uh, it seems very active, but it's a horrible company. Definitely stay away from it. Uh, so again, I have about, uh, let's see, so I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven companies. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for bringing with me. Uh, I know these updates were kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if they might be a full transparent update. Hopefully not. I like the way Weeble is right now. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. I will see you in the next one. And hopefully I can finish this sector so we can move on to the next one.